So this is where we started. So we're going to do it in a much more intelligent way. Um, so the way we're going to do it is, let's first get rid of the roundabout, okay? So we are going to create um, the roundabout alignment. Okay, so it's going to be a center line alignment. It's going to a site and you can use my label set, but that's still fine. Okay. And again, my label set. So we are going to choose something we call, normally it's going to be within a fixed kind of element because we want it to be a circle. So um, what you're going to have is something we call center point and radius okay so let's say we choose this center point and we're going to do something called clockwise okay and we're going to do a radius radius we said for the inner um if you remember when we were starting out um the inner inscribed diameter if i remember is something i think like 22 okay we're going to remember it <laughs> Okay, that's the outer inscribed diameter. So let's try and edit the radius until we get it back. Okay, so was it 18? Nope. So that means it was 14. Yeah, I think it's something like 14, okay? As a central island diameter. And the beauty of this is you can move the center okay so then now since we have our alignment which is as we mentioned a circle we are going to create something called offset alignments now these offset alignments are going to represent two things one is going to represent the one is going to represent the line width which is roughly eight i think it should be the one outside so this should be two apron and let's do eight and it's going to create the alignment offsets. Okay, let's do the other way around. So let me just do it. Let me just edit them manually. So you go to edit offset parameters and you go here and this is minus two. So what we want to do is we do minus eight. Okay, for the line. And this we're also going to edit offset parameters. And we do two. So I'm creating that as my apron, okay? And again here, what I'm targeting is I'm trying to use connected alignments, okay? I explained connected alignments in one of our Civil 3D videos on the channel, so please check it out. Um, but here, we also just give you a brief background, okay? So I've created two connected alignments. And what I like about this is if I move the center, everything moves, okay? you can see everything is moving. So this is dynamic, okay? Again, now I go back and create connected alignments. I'm gonna create the first connected alignment. So it's gonna be between this alignment and this. Because um, I can design towards the, I can design towards the apron, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask me for the location. And again, I'm going to do the same. So we're going to have, it's going to ask us what do we want to label these. I'm going to leave these, the naming as they are. And the label sites, um, can use raiment, but that doesn't matter so much. We can have a design criteria of 30 kilometers per hour. You can use that, uh, the Astra roads. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, we're going to make it a circular fillet. And let's start with the radius of 25. Change the offsets to zero. It's very important because you don't need any offsets. Okay. And the overlap, let's do six meters. Okay. First start, six. Okay. So when you preview it, you can see what's going to create. It's going to create that kind of alignment. Okay. And you click OK. So you can see again, the beauty with this is you can control um how far back this goes so you can move this a bit further back and you can have much more control in regards to this and you can introduce even an offset here 
an offset if you want, but that's, so we're going to start with that. So we're going to do this for all the other. So we select this and then select this and start with 25, okay? Roughly the same. Okay, everything is the same, click okay. And as you can see, it has created that. Again, we do the same. It's just to have a starting point. And you can watch me do this, but uh, you can try doing it for yourselves. Um, so just try and do this on all the different arms, okay? Um, for the entry and exit radius, okay? It's gonna be quite obvious. So um, uh, let's, let's just create this. Again, let's just create this. Okay. Um, you may struggle at one of the arms because that's where the alignment starts from, but we should be okay. We may struggle with this other arm here, but that's fine. Uh, we don't take offense. Yeah, because the alignment stops around here. So if, when you select this and you select this, it's, it's a problem. So you can just ignore that. So what we've done here is that we have uh, put out the different alignments. And again, as I mentioned, the beauty with this is everything is dynamic, okay? Everything is dynamic, everything moves. Okay, so we've at least drawn the entry. Um, the entry, we could say um, the entry curve radius and the exit curve radius. So now we're going to do the outer radiuses, okay? And again, we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to just do the connected alignments. Um, create, not create offset, create connected alignment. So now to do the outer radius, we're going to offset these by the carriage way. Um, depending on the length width in your country, just adhere with that. So I'm going to just create 3.5 for that, okay? And again, create offset alignments. We are again going to create 3.5. Okay. And again, we're going to create offset alignment. We're going to create 3.5. And again, create offset alignment. We're going to create 3.5. Okay. Now, since we've created that, again, we're going to do the same. Just create connected alignments. And we're going to start with something around 40. And if you watch the theory, you should understand what we're doing, okay? So let's start with 40. No, 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 okay, I didn't specify that. Create connected alignment, just that. That, select the arm. And again, we're going to start with, let's say we start with 35. Let's start with 40, okay? Again, the same. So again, we do the same here. Okay? We do the same here. Yep. Okay, again we do the same. And again we may have the same issue we talked about looking at the center where your roundabout is. Uh, but I think this should be okay. I know it's on normal on this other arm. That's where, you know when, the, when it creates an alignment, it creates kind of like a start and end point and the end point is around here. So that's why we're having an issue with this other one, but that's fine. Um, I've started with 40 for all. So again, we do the same. We do the same. We do the same. 
Here it won't disturb us on the outer. It won't be a challenge to just accept. Okay, so again we do the same. And you can see some of these areas we start having uh, overlaps. Okay. And again, what you're seeing here is we've been able to create a starting point for the roundabout. And again, as I mentioned, the roundabout is quite very dynamic. As you can see, it's quite very, very dynamic. Um, anywhere we need to move it. And that's why this manual method is better than drawing with accent points. So you can move this up, you can move this down, you can move this left, right, and you can see the limitations um, of, in case you're in a situation where you have to do the roundabout manually, okay? So you can move it there and you see which strings come off and off, okay? And the beauty also, other beauty is you can now move these alignments. You can now move this here because we're offsetting it to the right to increase the deflection, okay? And again here we have the same thing, we could move this a bit to the right to have more deflection on the entry, okay? Again the same thing here, we talked about this, let's, uh, let's just move it this to the right to have more deflection on the entry, again the same here, we just move it to the right a bit to have more deflection. Okay. And now, as I mentioned, you now have much more control over the alignment. So you can move this back and then control how far you want this, this to go, okay? Um, let's just move this further more to the right to just make this um, closer to what we have. And again, you can see everything is dynamic, okay? Okay, so we can see that the exit radius, something like that. Then let's go here and try and do the same. Okay. Again here we can do, because it includes the shoulders, but this is okay. So we can just turn this a notch down, pit down. Okay. And again, we're going to do the same here. So I expect you to do the same on all the other different arms and to just make sure you come up with something that's we can reduce this to reduce the overlap. Okay, makes it a bit tighter. Again, the same. Now this is where you have to learn the theory. The theory helps you know where to stop and what are your limits, okay? Otherwise, to be like video games. You just be playing video games with this. Okay. So now you can see here, let's say, if we go to alignment properties, and we go to the connected property, it shows me I have a radius of 33. Now, depending on what you're designing for, you can find out we can make this 35, okay? Um, why is it refusing? Okay, we have 30. Let me just push the offsets further down and so that we have much more to work with. Okay, so you can find that we have um, a very good starting point for this. Now, we have drawn the roundabout and we've started now getting different parameters. So you can look at the different arc radius and you know the radius we're using. For example, in this case, we're using 25. And you keep checking these with your manual, okay? Um, and also you're looking at things like split islands where you're saying to yourself, the split islands at least, let's have 12. So you're thinking the length should be up to there. And you can do a number of things. One, you can start with some form of offset and you say, okay, I need to do that. And the other ways is again, making it much larger, okay? Up to, let's give it a very good point. So somewhere there, cause that's a bit large. Okay, you do the same here, okay? Okay, so you can see we're having a much bigger split island. And if we do the six meter offset, let's add six meters, we're still far off. I think it's around four. Do I remember? I need to remember. Something around four. You can see it's still a bit smaller. So you're going to have to play around with this until you get something really, really good. Um, I think we're really still far off. And we're going to have to move these further down. And you can see how I'm really struggling to go through with this. So again, we are going to do the offset a bit um, to kind of mirror and to kind of create what they have with this island. And it will give us that much wider 
um, aspect. Again, we do the same here, move it here, and we're going to just create a mini offset. So I, let me see the offset we've used here. There is alignment properties, okay? We have connection properties. We've done an offset of one. So let's go here, we'll also do an offset of one. Okay, alignment properties. Okay, let's make this 35. Connection overlap. Okay, that's fine. So we have done an uh, offset out. I think it's this one. Okay. One seems too much. Is it 0.5? Hmm, what's happening? Okay, let me just put it back to zero and I understand what's going on. Ah, okay, that's fine. I was wondering uh, what's going on. So we had moved the alignment and we have made this uh, to an offset of one, which I think is really big. So let's do 0.5. Okay, and let's also do this other one and make it 0.5. Okay, so it just resembles kind of a curb. Um, I think it's an alignment. Uh, let's do it this way, 0.5. Okay, that's what we wanted, 0.5. And then we have kind of a good starting point for the island. So now you can see after, after let's say four meters, we have some space for the island.